for the good evening one and all welcome all of you to this week session which are to happen in the first instance we would do i would do the introduction of the faculty as mentioned we have a very eminent faculty today who is an expert in this field which we are going to talk about he is the additional director for the Trivandrum Institute of Palliative Sciences, which is a WHO collaborating center for training and policy making for pain relief and palliative care. Dr. Sunil Kumar has added on his master's degree on top of his diploma in palliative medicine. And he has a wide experience, sound experience for very many years in palliative medicine, not only clinical efficiency. He is also a member of the academics and research organization department of the Pallium India and he oversees it. So it's a pleasure and privilege to have you with us to talk about something which is the best to you. So we are privileged to have you today. So further on I would leave the dice to you. Thank you uh, Dr. Ratma. Um... Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so today we are going to the second session on opioids, and I will be talking mainly about um, the uh, opioids for moderate to severe pain. Sophia, can you enable me to share the screen? Yes, sir. Access is already there, sir. No, host disabled part. Uh, uh, okay. Can you please uh, refresh and try now, sir? Yeah, so can I. Okay. Um, so, uh, as I told you, uh, we are talking about uh, opioids which uh, are used for moderate to severe pain. And what are the mechanisms of action of opioids? Uh, and we also know that um, many doctors don't use uh, opioids because of the side effects uh, associated with it. So we, it is important for us to understand what are the um, adverse effects of opioids and what all should be uh, should we be caring for when you start a patient on opioid. And uh, <clears throat> we know that there are different uh, opioids are available. Uh, and uh, many might be prescribing these medicines, but uh, they may not be knowing the uh, price of different opioids, uh, which is very important uh, from a uh, symptom control point of view. Uh, so, uh, as all you know, this is the base analgesic ladder, and uh, in this, um, in the step three, we have opioids for moderate to severe pain. Um, so can anybody tell me what are the opioids which we use in step three of the base analysis ladder? But all opioids are available in that step three in India. Any idea? Morphine. Yeah, morphine. Anything else? Methadone. Methadone, yes. Fentanyl patch. Fentanyl, yeah. It's buprenorphine. Fentanyl. Buprenorphine. Um, buprenorphine, we have not included in the step three. Uh, we usually say uh, we have three opioids which are available to treat uh, pain, uh, moderate to severe pain. So those three are morphine, fentanyl, and And uh, uh, you have to understand that. Uh, According to NDPS Act, we have six essential narcotic drugs notified under this. So uh, out of this six, three are uh, methadone, morphine, and fentanyl, and the rest three are codeine, oxycodone, and hydrocodone. So we, uh, we don't have uh, oxycodone or hydrocodone, and the codeine is a uh, opioid which is used in uh, step two, that is opioids for treating mild to moderate pain. So you can see a patient here. Uh, so 
what do you think uh, his main problem at the moment is pain yeah severe pain yes severe pain so suppose uh, you are seeing a patient like this what are you going to do for him pain evaluation management and supportive treatment yeah uh you uh, dr swetha you told that uh, he has uh, severe pain uh, so um, uh, we may not have uh, or it may not be appropriate to assess uh, details of pain because uh, he is as you told he is in severe pain so how will you go forward it is uh, we need to evaluate it properly but uh, we may not be able to uh, get a detailed history uh, a patient uh, from a patient like this so what would be the next step you understand that this patient has very severe pain condition of the patient depending upon the what the disease is he is suffering of okay yeah uh, so the assessment yeah. should be done yeah to know the intensity of the pain okay and how it aggravates what time it worsens yeah yeah um, yeah and those all are important uh, uh, ldpqrsp that is location duration palliative and protective factors quality of pain is it ready to somewhere else severity of pain uh, when does it aggravates etc etc so you have assessed that and the patient says uh, i cannot remember, but it is very severe pain Pardon, sir. A patient says, "I have very severe pain. I am unable to score the pain." I should step one treatment. Yeah, you should. For severe pain, we can directly go to the step two or step three. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, if he is already on a moderate opioid or an analgesic combination, then we can jump on to step three. Sir, if patient himself tells it's severe pain, uh, hmm. we need to go for step three directly. Okay. Uh, uh, so I will just give you the history of this patient. So this is a fifty-six-year-old man with a carcinoma of the larynx. He is complaining of uh, pain all around neck uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, even though he had uh, a pain uh, previously also, but for the last two weeks it is very severe. and suppose uh, he says it is 10 by 10 um, there is no radiation of pain he describes it as a sharp pain and because of this pain he is unable to sleep at night also so um, this is the description so this patient with uh, pain score of 10 by 10 and you can see this patient after an hour he is smiling what made this possible start with a lower dose of uh, opioid then try to uh, a pain crisis uh, i think is managed by iv morphine yeah okay uh, so what you have to understand um, uh, uh, whenever the patient has uh, uh, pain uh, and uh, if you know the severity then you can directly go to the step Uh, according to the severity of pain if the patient has severe pain uh, that is uh, the patient needs uh, step 3 of the bleach analysis bladder and if the patient has moderate pain go to step 2 and if the patient has mild pain only go to step 1 so this patient uh, needs uh, step 3 uh, opioids so uh, all over the world the gold standard for pain treatment is morphine ಇಂಜೆಕ್ಟಬಲ್ ಮಾರ್ಫಿನ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ
how to relieve pain with intravenous morphine so uh, you have to give injection morphine 1.5 mg at every 10 minutes interval and uh, the available uh, ampules of injection morphine uh, it might be different for uh, different uh, states and in uh, kerala we have uh, 15 mg ampules in 1 ml so we can dilute uh, 1 ml of morphine with uh, 9 ml of normal saline so that total 10 ml contains 15 mg and uh, each 1 ml contains 1.5 mg so we have to give 1.5 mg of morphine at every 10 minutes interval so what is the immediate side effect that you expect by administering injection morphine like this manner drowsiness nausea vomiting sedation okay and sedation pruritis pruritis okay anything constipation else? constipation immediate side effect i am asking about immediate side effect respiratory depression and uh, sedation sir okay itching itching yeah mm, so nausea, nausea and vomiting okay so the most important uh, side effect which can occur immediately would be nausea and vomiting so you have to give an antiemetic before administering injection morphine so first you will give injection metoclopramide 10 mg iv followed by injection morphine 1.5 mg at 10 minutes interval and how long would you continue to administer injection morphine like this every 10 minutes at uh, till patient uh, either patient gets pain relief or he becomes uh, excessively drowsy yeah. so we need to balance between the sedation and optimal pain relief yeah that's the end point when, when the pain subsides the patient starts sleeping yeah so this is the end point either the patient should have satisfactory pain relief or the patient should be sleepy so you have to also understand that uh, with morphine, each and every patient may not get a pain relief also. Uh, so all the pain are not opioid responsive. So those patients with opioid responsive pain will get good pain relief. Otherwise, uh, they may not have uh, satisfactory pain relief. Instead, they will become drowsy. So whenever drowsiness occurs, you have to stop. Or if the patient has good satisfactory or satisfactory pain relief, you have to stop that. So. Uh, whichever be the first okay so um, when you give injection morphine trial you can make a chart like this which includes time pulse rate respiratory rate blood pressure pain score is the patient drowsy or not and what is the dose of injection morphine you have administered suppose this patient came to us at 10 o'clock you record the vitals you ask the pain score patient says it's 10 by 10 and uh, you uh, see that patient is not drowsy, then you will give first dose of injection morphine. You give 1.5. Wait for 10 minutes. And again, uh, look for all the vitals. Ask the pain score. Is the patient drowsy? No. Then you can administer the next dose. So you can see this patient received three doses of injection morphine, 1.5 milligram. And at 10.30, when we assessed, the pain score is 1. Patient is not drowsy. So this means this patient has satisfactory pain relief with this three doses of morphine so you can stop the morphine that morphine trial then okay so you have given 4.5 milligram of iv morphine uh, with good pain relief so uh, is it an inpatient um, uh, inpatient procedure or uh, can we do it as also as an outpatient inpatient procedures sir, ideally Inpatient, ideally, because we required monitoring. Okay. Anybody else has any experience with uh, intravenous morphine titration? Okay. Uh, you can safely do this uh, in an outpatient setting. And uh, we every day can uh, have uh, two or three trials, uh, which we do at uh, various uh, centers. So, uh, you can safely do this as an outpatient procedure. So once you uh, have given pain relief for this patient uh, with 4.5 milligram, then you want to uh, discharge the patient, send the patient home. Uh, so we may, uh, it will not be possible to uh, give injectable morphine to the
to the patients when they so do we need to have uh, resuscitative uh, equipment or uh, normal pain opds uh, like uh, not uh, you actually doesn't need anything uh, okay you just monitor the vitals respiratory mm-hmm. rate drowsiness then you uh, you do not need anything else okay sir okay, okay. sir thank so, you so uh, this patient, sir, drug yeah. dose will be uh, drug dose will be equal for every body weight or it different with the different body weight uh, for children uh, it will be different uh, i will share you the doses uh, for children so uh, this patient received 4.5 mg of iv morphine and uh, how are we going to convert this into oral morphine when you send the patient home anybody any idea how to convert the injectable morphine into oral morphine maybe after 24 hours uh, if the pain is not there and the pain is not that severe what he had uh, originally and it comes and goes uh, not that severe then we can change to oral and give a trial and see uh, yeah mm, dr akshita is it like we first calculate in one day how much of morphine is required and uh, then divide the dose by 3 uh, yeah mm, so uh, there are various methods for converting uh, from uh, injectable uh, opioids to no not various methods uh, there are various uh, titration regimes uh, mm-hmm. for uh, pain relief but the one which we follow is um, uh, actually uh, we did a trial with this uh, with um, by dr rajwabal and his team and uh, uh, what we have found out was uh, you can directly convert uh, the injectable dose into the same oral uh, dose so this patient received 4.5 mg of iv morphine so you can directly convert it into the oral dose that is 4.5 mg of oral morphine which is not uh, feasible and uh, we have only 10 mg tablets so you can give actually 5 mg of oral morphine so how many times do we need to give uh, oral morphine like 4 hour 4 to 6 hours four it is around the clock every 4 hour 4 hour yeah. you need and, to give it yeah and additional for breakthrough pain yes that's correct so you have to give morphine every 4 hourly so this is how you will give morphine for this patient have morphine 10 mg when the patient wakes up uh, so it's um, say it's uh, 6 am the next dose will be at 10 am then at 2 pm 6 pm then 10 pm and uh, breakthrough is sos so the sos dose will be the same as regular dose but uh, you can see that at 10 pm uh, instead of uh, 5 mg uh, you have to administer uh, double dose okay so five times daily is given uh, but uh, it's uh, when you write it will be half um, tap morphine 10 mg half q4h that is q4 hourly and sos so you can see uh, many patients uh, who are in severe pain will be sleeping at uh, 6 am uh, so uh, you need not administer at 6 am but the first dose need to be given when the patient wakes up likewise uh, you can also Uh, have a relaxation uh, for the uh, bed time instead of 10 pm sir is it direct conversion sir for example if the patient needs uh, something like 80 mg iv 80 so uh, 80 mg yeah uh, so is it uh, like uh, same 80 mg uh, direct conversion to oral uh, so everybody is it like one is to one everybody will have a doubt regarding this because uh, all of you might have read that uh, injectable morphine is three times uh, 
more potent than more potent. oral morphine mm -hmm. but this is applicable when the patient has received uh, injectable morphine at least for 24 hours uh, that's the time when the morphine will have a sustained blood level uh, only after 24 hours but in this patient uh, we are giving morphine only for one hour and we are trying to convert uh, by uh, multiplying into three uh, which is not uh, actually uh, will be uh, more than the required dose so mm -hmm. when you have a uh, patient whose blood level is sustained after giving injectable morphine for 24 hours then multiplying by three might be uh, okay but here this patient has received only uh, three or four doses of morphine um, by which uh, the blood level will not be uh, having a sustained uh, concentration in the blood so that's why uh, we are not multiplying it with uh, the factor three okay so one, for, one is to one example, would be like a, uh, a, yeah IV dose uh, comes to be uh, around 60 mg. So, how do we go about? You can directly convert to 60 mg. Okay, Excuse 60 me. mg again throughout but, the clock we need to give. No, it's the single dose, 60 milligram, four hourly. Suppose the patient received okay. 15 milligram of morphine. That is, mm. every 10 minutes you are giving uh, 1.5 milligram. And uh, he received a total 10 doses. That means, um, in 100 minutes, he received 15 milligrams. So then you have to convert um, it into 15 milligrams every four hour day. Okay. Directly, directly they, can we start yes. that? I answer? think they are getting confused with full day. What you have mentioned is acute pain. That situation how you are managing and that you are converting that dose. I think people are getting confused with the full day dose and uh, yeah. uh, maybe. So, so don't uh, confuse with that. So just see here. We have given 4.5 milligram of IV morphine for this patient. So this 4.5 milligram we have to give every four hourly. Okay. Suppose a patient needs 10 milligram with injectable uh, IV morphine titration. You need to give every uh, 10 milligram every four hourly. It's not uh, 10 milligram per 24 hour. It is 10 milligram every four hourly. Okay, sir. So the, the doubt, uh, the doubt like, was, uh, how do we decide uh, on the doses according to like first we need to give IV check and then same is converted into oral, isn't it, sir? Yes, uh, but uh, it is also true that uh, many centers may not have injectable morphine. Mm -hmm. uh, in such cases, we have to give uh, oral morphine. Okay. okay, sir. No, no. The the doubt was when it yeah. was a higher dose like. Uh, 80 milligram and all, how do we adjust that? That was the doubt. This is a lower dose. Yeah, usually uh, um, from my experience, uh, none of the patient has received a 80 milligram for the first insert, instant. Okay. So it is theoretically possible. So you have to convert it into 80 milligram for our. Okay. What is the tolerability of the oral, orally when we give? How do they uh, tolerate? Uh, the gastric the irritation or a nausea or vomiting. Do uh, we have to give an anti emetic each time when we are going to give yes. morphine orally? Uh, so we are going to talk about that later. Okay. Uh, we will talk about this uh, in the adverse effects of opioids. So if you don't have injectable morphine, then you have to give. Uh, oral morphine trial. So in oral morphine trial, if the patient is opioid naive, that is a patient who has not taken any opioids or uh, he is not on any opioids now, then you have to start with 5 milligram of morphine every 4 hourly with SOS dose. And if the patient is already on weak opioids like uh, codeine or tramadol, then you can start with 10 milligram morphine every 4 hourly and SOS. Then you may call this patient for review after uh, 24 to 36 hours and see how much dose he has consumed and then you can increase the dose of morphine if required. And uh, um, this patient, uh, we have started him on 5 milligram morphine every 4 hourly with a service dose. And uh, this patient was relatively pain free for the uh, last two weeks, but then he needed uh, 4 SOS dose of morphine every day for the last four days. 
uh, what should we do now? Do we need to do anything now? And In how frequently would you give SOS dose of oral morphine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody told uh, increase the dose. <clears throat> so how much would you increase the 30 dose? 30 to 50% uh, of the total dose we can increase and uh, we have to keep the SOS maximum, I think two to three times. <clears throat> Okay. But we need to calculate one day, uh, like how much he is needing. And the same thing, we need to divide uh, into four doses and double the dose at, uh, during sleep. And yeah. SOS also same dose. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so for this patient, uh, he is taking 5 milligram for hour day. That means he is taking 30 milligrams in it. And for the last two days, he is taking four additional doses. That is, he is getting... 20 milligram uh, additional that is 30 plus 20 that comes to 50 milligram so how are you going to give 50 milligram <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay so uh, if the patient is taking two or more than SOS dose that's an indication to increase the dose of morphine okay as I told um, it is you can increase it by every 30 to 50 percentage uh, even uh, every 24 to 36 hours you can increase the dose so if the patient is taking two or more than sos dose increase the dose by 30 to 50 percentage so this patient is getting uh, five milligram and uh, uh, if you increase it by 50 percentage that means 2.5 5 plus 2.5 that is 7.5 milligram 7.5 milligram every four hour day that is that will come to 45 milligram or you can increase it up to 10 milligram uh, every four hour day that will be 60 milligram so uh, both are acceptable 7.5 to 10 milligram every four hourly and sos is acceptable in this patient so how frequently would you give the SOS, SOS is again 10 mg is it sos uh, would be the regular dose what you are giving suppose the patient okay. is taking 10 milligram every four hourly then again you have to give 10 milligram SOS. and sleep dose is double yeah night at, what at it night, is uh, or the bedtime dose would be the double of the regular dose okay sir thank you and how frequently would you give SOS dose of oral morphine suppose the patient has taken uh, oral morphine at 6 a.m and the patient says uh, by 6 30 a.m he says uh, i still have severe pain uh, wh what are you going to do for this patient We can give as well as dose at the time, uh, 6 o'clock. Uh, he took that... morphine at 6 a.m. After 30 minutes, he's uh, telling that I have severe pain. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? Double the dose. Double the dose? Yes. Okay, anybody else? Is there any formula to calculate? We are talking okay. about SOS dose. Okay. Then we can uh, double the dose because the what was given is not sufficient to uh, pain uh, for the pain to get relieved. So we I can try. Dose. SOS dose should be the same. Yeah, SOS dose should be the same. But I am asking you when should we give the SOS dose? Uh, no, my question is, uh, is SOS meaning breakthrough dose? Is that yeah, different? SOS is same as breakthrough dose. So, uh, isn't a breakthrough dose supposed to be maybe one-sixth of the original dose? Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, uh, one-sixth, yeah. So, if you calculate the one-sixth, then that would come to the regular dose. Suppose the patient is taking 10 milligram every four hourly. The total dose is 60 milligram. And if you take the 1.6, that means it's 10 milligram. So breakthrough or SOS is the same and uh, it would be the regular dose. So it would be 10 milligram. So I'm asking at 6.30 a.m., what are we supposed to do? This patient is complaining of severe pain, even though he received one dose at 6 a.m. Repeat the dose. No? Sorry? Give the same dose, repeat the Give dose. Give the same dose, okay. Yeah, anybody else? Not before four hours. 
I think not so. before four hours. Mm. So we already told that uh, morphine needs to be given every four hours, but we also mm. told that in addition to regular dose, we have to give SOS. Mm. Okay, so for understanding this, we have to understand a little bit of uh, pharmacology. So you can see this is the uh, poppy plant and um, uh, this is legally grown only in three states of India, UP, MP and Rajasthan. Okay, uh, and uh, there are um, uh, poppy fields uh, like paddy fields in Kerala. Uh, so you can see uh, this uh, seed like things which are known as pod. POD pod and farmers are making small cuts on this pods uh, and you can see the sap is oozing out from this pod which they will collect and dry it in sunlight and will um, uh, and will be transporting to government opium and alkaloid factories uh, and they will make morphine powder out of it okay and uh, uh, morphine is absorbed uh, from the upper small intestine and uh, one of the important thing is uh, it is uh, bitter. So when you uh, powder the tablet, you have to sweeten it. Otherwise, patient will complain of uh, bitter uh, taste. Uh, and it is uh, hydrophilic, that is water soluble. So because of this property, it has a slow onset of action, but at the same time, longer duration of action. And uh, it is, um, it can be administered through various routes, but uh, sublingual route is not advisable as well as buccal or gingival route. Um, so um, there is a practice uh, that many people administer morphine sublingually, uh, but if some patients uh, gets good pain relief after sublingual administration, that means the patient has swallowed it. So sublingual is not advisable, but um, that can be, uh, the effect might be due to uh, the patient has uh, swallowed it. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you have to also understand that for sub so why, why it's not Why it's not advisable? For what reason? Because it is not fat soluble. It okay. is hydrophilic. So, uh, uh, there are, uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, after sublingual administration, uh, it may get absorbed very slowly and we don't know how long it will take. Okay, so that's why it is not usually advisable. That's another reason why it should not be administered sublingually. So what happens when you swallow the morphine tablet? It will uh, go into the GI tract and from the upper small intestine, it will be absorbed into the blood vessels and then from there to portal vein and from portal vein to liver and where metabolism takes place. And then the uh, metabolites are liberated into the systemic circulation. So what are the major metabolites or uh, uh, morphine? Uh, is, okay, uh, as I told you, it, uh, it is mainly metabolized in liver, but uh, partly very minor uh, in kidney and uh, GIT also. And 90% of morphine is converted into metabolites. After meta metabolism, uh, mainly two metabolites are formed. It is uh, known as M3G and M6G. That is morphine 3 glucuronide and morphine 6 glucuronide. You can see uh, M6G is formed in less quantity, only 5 to 10 percentage. But this is the component which will give you pain relief. Whereas M3G doesn't have much action in our body. Okay. So, um, morphine, uh, it has to uh, be absorbed from the upper small intestine, then uh, it is, uh, it will go into the portal vein and then to liver where metabolism takes place and uh, metabolites are liberated into the systemic circulation, which will give uh, pain relief. So this process uh, or uh, the pain relief uh, might start by uh, half an hour, but the peak action would be by one hour. So it is better to wait for uh, one hour after administration of one dose of morphine. So that's the um, interval um, between two doses of morphine, one hour. That's the time where the peak action of morphine occurs.
So wait for one hour after administration of the previous dose. So our patient at 6 a.m. he took one dose and by 6.30 a.m. Uh, he may not have good pain relief. He has to wait for another one hour which will give good pain relief. So wait for one hour before administering the next dose. Okay. So here our patient's pain is stabilized. Uh, the um, uh, dose of morphine was increased to 10 milligram because of his, um, his consuming um, um, SOS dose. So it was increased to 10 milligram every four hourly with SOS dose. But the patient says um, it is very difficult to take it every four hourly. It, it's uh, true, isn't it? Uh, if, uh, if we take an antibiotic like amoxicillin, uh, which needs to be taken uh, eight hourly, uh, then uh, how many of us would complete uh, the five day course? Here, the patient has to take morphine every four hourly and probably lifelong. So he says, uh, sorry, I am unable to take it. Uh, can you uh, give it uh, less frequently? Do yes, sir, there are uh, modified morphine release and sustained release tablets are available, which can be given at two times a day or single dose. What is the duration of action of uh, uh, sustained release tablet? Sir, well, it is sir. 12 hours. 12 hours. So how many times uh, we need to give it? So two BD. times. Yeah, BD. two times. So we can give sustained release morphine. Sustained release morphine is also known as controlled release morphine. And duration of action is 12 hours. So this patient uh, who was taking 10 milligram every four hourly, that means he is taking 60 into 30 milligram SR, uh, sustained release twice daily. But we also need to, what else need to be given with us? The a constipation can, and also nausea vomiting, we need to give drugs. Yeah, uh, that we have to give. Uh, what else? Suppose this patient have breakthrough pain, what will you do? Mm -hmm. Combine it with other drugs. Sir, so we have to give immediate rele release morphine. Yeah. No For morphine. breakthrough pain, you have to give immediate release morphine. That is the regular morphine, or uh, which is also known as fast-acting morphine. So this patient uh, was taking 10 milligram every four hourly, isn't it? So you can also give 10 milligram of immediate release morphine as SOS or breakthrough dose. So these are the preparations of morphine available. Uh, syrups. Uh, are available at some places. Tablets and capsules, both immediate release and controlled release are available and injections. So this patient was on 10 milligram morphine every four hourly for the past six months. But then he was brought to you uh, to the casualty with excessive drowsiness. So you uh, were in a doubt uh, why this patient is drowsy. So you uh, ordered a lot of investigation and the only finding uh, uh, which was abnormal was a serum creatine of 5 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, will you do anything with morphine dosage? No. No, sir. So why this patient is drowsy? Sir, it may be accumulation of the morphine metabolite. Okay. Uh, so, uh, maybe like uh, not cleared through kidneys. Yeah, would you like to do anything with morphine dose then? Yes, sir, we have to reduce the dose. Two third of the dose. Two third of what he was taking. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, how morphine is excreted from the body after metabolism? It is by glomerular filtration. So what happens in renal failure? The morphine 6 glucuronide and morphine accumulates in the body. So whatever you are giving, it is not excreted from the body. So it is getting accumulated. So it can produce neurotoxicity. Um, so that's the reason for excessive drowsiness 
in this patient. So what you have to do, you have to uh, skip one or two doses of morphine and uh, wait or wait till the patient uh, becomes alert and then start with a smaller dose. So maybe instead of 10 milligram, uh, four hourly, you might decrease it to uh, five milligram, uh, depending on the creatinine status. And also uh, you may not give it every four hourly, maybe uh, BD, TID or six hourly. Or you can, another option is you can switch over to uh, alternate opioids, which are renally safe. So which are the opioids uh, you can give uh, safely? even in uh, patients with chronic kidney disease. Fentanyl, sir. Yes, fentanyl. Anything else? Tremadol also we can give, but it is not as potent. Uh, uh, the dose we need yeah. to... We cannot combine uh, two opioids. Uh, tremadol and... Fentanyl. Fentanyl. Methadone. Okay, pandemic and methadone uh, are uh, good alternatives uh, for patients uh, with renal failure. Uh, a tramadol is relatively safe, <clears throat> but uh, uh, in CKD stage 5, uh, which is the end stage renal disease, uh, the maximum dose of uh, tramadol advisable is 100 milligram per day. Okay, uh, so we reduced. Uh, the dose of oral morphine to 5 milligram every 8 hourly because of this excessive drowsiness and morphine accumulation. Uh, so he was comfortable uh, for the last two months. But then he was unable to swallow anything including morphine. Uh, he is deteriorating and uh, he is probably uh, at the end of life. That's why he is unable to take anything orally. But um, if he is not uh, taken morphine, he has severe pain. So what will you do for this patient? We can uh, put him on fentanyl patch. Okay. Yes. Any uh, anything else? Any other option? Buprenorphine patch. Okay. Anything else? Through rice so tube. We can we put rice tube and, and we can give mm, morphine um, through rice tube. Okay. Anything else? This patient is at home. Okay. Uh, so what are the routes uh, through which you can administer morphine? IV. IV, yes. Subcutaneous. Subcutaneous, yes. I am. I am. It can be, but uh, it has a lot of uh, disadvantages. Oral. Oral. Yes. Anything else? Any Sublingual other? buccal. Sublingual buccal, we told that it is, uh, it is not so advisable. Okay, so intravenous or subcutaneous, oral route, that is the most common route, can be administered correctly. Okay. Epidural and intrathecal. Okay, these are the routes through which you can administer morphine. So for our patient who is unable to take anything orally, what can we do? Correctal. Yes, correctal. We can administer correctly. Okay. So this patient, uh, parietal root is comparable to oral root. Okay, that means whatever you are giving orally, that you have to give correctly. It will have same effect, same duration of action, and uh, even some literature says uh, parietal root is more superior uh, to oral root in case of morphine. So um, this patient is taking five milligram uh, eight hourly. So you can uh, give morphine correctly. We need not put a rail steep. We need not uh, change it to um, buprenorphine or fentanyl. This patient is at home uh, who is dying. 
so use the morphine tablets itself. Uh, you can, uh, I told you it is hydrophilic. So make, uh, take five milligram of morphine, add two drops of matter and make it a paste and put it into the arabit or the rectal mucosa. That will give a good pain relief. So we are moving on to another patient. This is a patient, uh, 55, year old, 55 year old lady with the carcinoma of the colon who has abdominal pain and uh, describing it as continuous pain. Uh, and she was uh, on 10 milligram of morphine. But with 10 milligram of morphine, she is very comfortable. She has good pain relief and she uh, is not taking any SOS dose of morphine. So because of this, uh, the patient was also asking uh, for uh, something else because she find it difficult every four hourly. And as you told previously, the doctor has advised them to uh, replace the morphine with a fentanyl patch, 25 microgram. But next day, patient uh, is coming to you and uh, telling you that uh, she replaced the fentanyl patch after five hours as she had no pain relief. So what will you do for this patient? Anybody? So uh, can we then again uh, start morphine? Yes, we can start on morphine. The patch so will take some time with to morphine, act. Why replace with fentanyl patch? Sorry? Sir, if she is comfortable with the morphine, then why uh, replaced with fentanyl patch? No, patient was uh, complaining that I, it is not possible for me to mm -hmm. take every four hour day. Give me okay. something else. So that's why doctor replaced it with a uh, pendant patch. The, uh, Sir, can we can transdermal patch will morphine. take some time to act. And peak levels reach after uh, nearly 10 hours. Okay. So till then we need to give something for her uh, breakthrough pain. Okay. So uh, uh, all the patient stories described here uh, is uh, which are practical because uh, this is a patient who came to us like this. So that's why I um, came up with patient this patient story. So what we have to understand are a few points about uh, transdermal fentanyl patches. Um, when you apply the transdermal fentanyl patch, uh, it will liberate the uh, fentanyl into the subcutaneous tissue, and it forms it will form a subcutaneous tissue depot. Okay, and for this, uh, it will take about eight to twelve hours. Okay, so after eight to twelve hours, the fentanyl will be liberated into the systemic circulation from the subcutaneous tissue depot. So till eight to twelve hours, the patient may not have uh, pain relief. So you stop the morphine and put the uh, patient on a fentanyl patch. For uh, uh, so the uh, first eight to twelve hours after application of fentanyl patch, the patient uh, need to get uh, some medication. Otherwise, uh, not some medication, the opioid which he was using previously. You have to continue it for eight to twelve hours. So after eight to twelve hours, you can discontinue that. So please understand that uh, you have to advise the patient to take. Uh, the opioid which he was taking previously for 8 to 12 hours even after application of transdermal fentanyl patch and once applied uh, it has a duration of action of three days so you have to replace it every 72 hours uh, sir if i'm uh, not uh, incorrect so we have to uh, if it is a patch is given of fentanyl also we uh, the drugs the primary drugs should not be stopped immediately because it will take another sometimes the level of uh, fentanyl to wet, to act to accumulate. Yeah. Yes. Till this yes. time, uh, the another drug is needed to immediate pain relief. So this patient was taking ten milligram morphine every four hours. So okay. when you apply the patch, you continue the morphine for eight to oh, two yeah. hours. Then okay, don't okay. to stop giving morphine. Uh, uh okay. 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 So Thank another you. important thing is. When you yes, apply the patch, don't shave the area because shaving will produce abrasions in your skin, which will increase the absorption. And also okay. temperature will also uh, increase the absorption. So, okay, so uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb, sir. So uh, if uh, the patient sometimes, as in this patient case, so because patient have to go home for various reasons, he or he might not able to take the morphine. So mm. the patient wanted another alternative, which will stay like some patch thing. Mm. But we have to tell the patient that uh, to the patch to work, it will take another uh, some time. So till that time, you have to continue your old drug. It can be morphine or any other opioid. Yes. Otherwise, pa right. patient will might get think that okay, why it is not working the patch, and yes. he or he might get in distress. Yes, and so that we have happens. to counsel this patient yes. that this is how this works, medicine or the patch. Yes, yes. that's what happened in this patient also. Nobody okay. has educated the patient regarding what will happen. That's why she removed the patch after five hours. Oh, uh, that is because, uh, because we are losing the patch also. Patient is also not benefited. Yes. And uh, okay, thank you, sir. Understood. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, uh, if we have to start directly fentanyl, uh, then uh, how uh, do we start it? So, actually, uh, there is a practice of uh, giving transdermal fentanyl patch for each and every pain, but it is not really true because you know that after application of fentanyl patch, it will liberate only the constant amount of fentanyl into the systemic circulation. So if you apply 25 microgram patch, it will liberate 25 microgram only every hourly. So if the patient has uh, a pain, which is not stabilized, that is patient has frequent ups and downs in pain, then it is not suitable for those patients. So I will not advise to start any patient directly on with uh, transdermal fentanyl patch. You, first, you find out what would be the dose required for the patient with the short-acting opioids like morphine. And when pain is stabilized, you convert that morphine into fentanyl. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, and in such cases where we, where we put patient on a fentanyl patch, what do we do for breakthrough pain? Uh, so uh, you can give uh, that uh, you can give morphine. This patient was taking ten milligram every four hourly. You can give it, but as long as the patient uh, needs more SOS doses, then you should not convert it into um, a fentanyl patch. Uh, so another doubt. So uh, what I understood from this that uh, until uh, patient is pain free for a definite time period we should not be switch over to the fentanyl because uh, that only 25 milligram or uh, that same amount will be delivered yeah there to the patch if patient have more pain or then we have to again go to sos morphine so it will be yeah. uh, like we are giving two drugs so until uh, like we are very have to be sure that you have to uh, take this morphine or whatever patient is continuing a definite amount if you are pain free for some time then only slowly like switch over to local patch yeah that's the because otherwise they'll be on the more drugs two yeah. drugs yeah that's a good practice that's what i meant by stabilize okay. pain okay okay so, so okay. Two, two or yeah. more uh, sos doses of uh, morphine if patient is requiring then we cannot uh, Go for fentanyl patch. Uh, 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 it would be better not to convert. First, you increase the dose of morphine and find out whether that dose gives good pain relief and then convert it into fentanyl patch. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, Dr. Umapati. Yes. Pardon, sir? Now, were you uh, asking something? No, 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 sir. Okay. I got another call. Okay. Yeah. Um, sir, uh, after stabilization, like uh, like we know now, patient is requiring only one dose, mm. uh, one uh, like below two doses of uh, SOS, below two SOS doses. Mm. So, like in this case, when pain is stabilized, again uh, for breakthrough pain, we'll be gi giving the same amount of morphine which was we were giving previously. Yeah, okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, so uh, these are the various preparations of uh, fentanyl available. Uh, injectable uh, injection fentanyl is available, then transdermal fentanyl patch and oral transmucosal fentanyl separate, mm -hmm. or OTFC, and that is like a lollipop. 
which is very useful in instant pain. That is uh, pain which is which occurs during movement, which is very short lasting. So uh, you can uh, use OTFC, uh, which uh, you can rub it over the buccal mucosa, and the patient will have immediate pain relief. But uh, for last one or two years, I have not seen oral transmucosis and acetate in India. And compared to um, morphine, uh, fentanyl is like filic. And for all practical purpose, you can take uh, fentanyl as 100 times more potent than morphine. And please keep it in mind that 60 milligram of oral morphine per day is equivalent to 25 microgram fentanyl patch. So based on this, you can calculate the dose of uh, fentanyl required for a patient. 60 milligram of oral morphine is equivalent to 25 microgram of fentanyl patch. So another doubt, uh, in the pre-test it was asked that uh, how much, um, uh, means what is the maximum limit of uh, morphine we can give to a patient or days we have uh, this much, uh, I actually forgot. So what is the upper limit or maximum dose it, we can give to a patient? Because yeah. we are giving in between the SOS also. Yeah. Definite pr primary 10 or 4 mg for early plus mm -hmm. SOS we have to give. Uh, so yeah. how we calculate the initial dose of, uh, means it can go up to more amount because we are giving SOS. Yeah. So uh, can somebody answer this question? What should be the maximum dose of morphine? But there is no, there is, there is no like maximum, a, dose. A maximum dose of uh, morphine. We, each, it, it may differ. So it's yeah. all uh, based on the side effects and. Uh... Yeah. Theoretically, there is no maximum dose for morphine. And uh, the dose which is required for that particular patient is the maximum dose for that patient. So usually uh, most of the patients uh, pain will be relieved with the 5 to 20 milligram of morphine for hourly. But um, I, ha I had a patient uh, who was on 450 milligram of oral morphine every four hourly. And I know another patient who was on 700 uh, milligram of oral morphine for hourly. And if you look at the literature, there are uh, many patients who are even thousands of milligrams of morphine. So there is no maximum uh, limit for but the. We should morphine. know the lethal dose. What is the lethal dose? Uh, it all depends on. Uh, suppose uh, if the patient doesn't uh, doesn't need morphine, that is the patient doesn't have any pain, then uh, I'm not sure what would be the lethal dose for that patient. Uh, if you give some. Maybe uh, some 30 milligram of IV morphine as a single push. That might be the lethal dose. No, ma, ma, one question. In your practice, uh, the maximum dose what you have used, nobody has been uh, collapsed with that dose. Uh, so I will tell you another story. Um, uh, I think we are running short of time. It's already six. But... Uh, I think it is important to answer your question. Uh, so one patient was brought to us uh, uh, who was uh, actually had a um, CVA and this patient was admitted in another hospital. And uh, in his room, uh, there was another patient uh, who had a carcinoma of the stomach and he was taking 50 milligram of morphine for hourly. And uh, the nurse administered the 50 milligram to the CVA patient who was not on any morphine. So by mistake. Uh, so at that time, um, we, uh, when they called us, uh, we asked them to bring the patient here. Uh, so we were expecting him uh, with some respiratory depression, excessive drowsiness and things like that. So we observed the patient and we made all uh, things ready uh, if uh, opioid uh, respiratory depression occurs, uh, like the naloxone was made ready. But that patient even didn't have drowsiness. None of the signs of opioid toxicity. He was not taking any opioid. So, uh, uh, but uh, um, it is, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, so it is uh, always better uh, to keep uh, some antidote uh, near, uh, in your hospital. But what I have. That? What is the antidote, sir? It is naloxone. Naloxone. 
but yes. i have to also tell you that i have in seen any case of respiratory depression during the last 18 years of my career in palliative care i really? have given um oral morphine maybe for 20 30000 patients mm. and uh, injectable morphine for thousands of patients but i haven't seen even a case of respiratory depression see oral dose leading you, to sir. such bad outcomes is very rare as mm. you have mentioned i have also practiced pain and chronic pain and i have seen patients on 600 800 type of things but see they would have not gone to 600 800 on day one okay Correct. so you have to have so many things in mind so individual i overall if you take there's no specific like maximum you titrate it it's all patient based individual uh, patient has the influence how long how often so many factors are there so having nalo- uh, naloxone ready and it's available and then how you have to give you have to be prepared you should know what are the symptoms or signs of overdose and oral doses causing all these type of uh, unwanted or lethal impact is very very less as he has mentioned we have all been practicing touch wood for so many years and we have not seen patients like that always naloxone is kept ready and it can be managed i think we can go ahead with your presentation so that we will have to do the case presentation also i hope it's okay sir uh, yeah uh, so uh, we are now talking about uh, two patient situation one is a 70 year old man with carcinoma of the lung and is complaining of throbbing pain on right front of chest which is continuous in nature only 5 by uh, scores 5 by 10 uh, he is a non epileptic and is on phenytoin 100 mg bd how will you manage his pain okay uh, it's moderate pain sir yeah uh, so um, what Uh, should be or which step of the beta analgesic ladder should be step 2 sir step 2 step 2 so which opioid are you going to give this patient and uh, we can't give tramadol because he is epileptic yeah uh, that's one point that uh, i just uh, want to point out um, so tramadol is uh, a medication to reduce the seizure threshold so this patient is already non epileptic so Uh, while you give tramadol there is a remote chance that this patient can uh, have a uh, seizure precipitated uh, but uh, the seizure usually precipitates when you give more than the recommended dose that is more than 400 mg per day or fast uh, iv push these are the instances where you can precipitate a seizure so for this patient uh, i might start him on a low dose of morphine instead of uh, tramadol what about tepentadol sir tepentadol is also a newer uh, not newer uh, it has come into the market for last 4 5 years and uh, uh, it is a uh, it has the same property like tramadol so tepentadol is also not advisable so this is a patient another patient uh, mr p is on tab morphine 50 mg 4 hourly and she attends your clinic with severe pain you have injection pentosocin and oral morphine tablet how will you manage this patient which one would you use pentosocin uh, for twin hmm. anybody Thirty mg pentazosin is equivalent to morphine. So, equipotent it, dose we need to see and injection pentazosin or a oral morphine tablet. Injection pentazosin, sir. Sir, oral morphine. Why oral morphine? Don't you want to give pain relief as early as possible? and we start with an iv morphine no iv morphine is not available injection pentazosin and oral morphine tablet are the two options you have injection pentazosin sir yeah thank you injection pentazosin yeah so um you know what is an opioid 
so opioids uh, they produce their action by combining with the opioid receptors and its action should be antagonized by naloxone so these are the two properties for a medicine to become opioid and uh, you know that mu kappa and delta are the opioid receptors and uh, based on the action on receptor opioids can can be classified into agonist antagonist and agonist antagonist so into three groups so what is an agonist agonist means those are medications which when administered will provide uh, physiological action that is uh, pain relief uh, nausea vomiting constipation all those <clears throat> that is an agonist uh, what is an antagonist antagonist is opposite to agonist isn't opposite. it opposite works against yeah, yeah. Uh, so suppose uh, antagonist is naloxone if i give you naloxone what will happen suppress action reverse the effects now I, i am giving naloxone to you what would be the action in your body it will not have any action because uh, you are not taking any opioid isn't it so antagonist will competitively inhibit agonist it works only in presence of agonist agonist antagonist means on some receptors it will act as an agonist but on some other receptor it will act as an antagonist so let's uh, look at this graph uh, examples of uh, agonists are uh, morphine methadone fentanyl tramadol all those are agonist so um, here on the x axis it is the dose of opioid and on the y axis it is the pain relief so this patient has uh, this much pain 10 by 10 okay uh, suppose you give injection morphine uh, sorry morphine Uh, 5 mg it will give some pain relief and as you increase the dose that will give corresponding pain relief and when you increase the dose up to this red line it will give complete pain relief so this is the property of agonist which is known as no ceiling effect for analgesia there is no ceiling effect for analgesia <coughs> but in case of agonist and antagonist what happens so you can see up to the red line if you increase the dose of agonist and antagonist that will give corresponding pain relief but after the red line even if you increase the dose of uh, agonist and antagonist it will not give any pain relief you can see the curve flattens so agonist and antagonist uh, there is a maximum dose for analgesia which is known as ceiling effect for analgesia so agonist have no ceiling effect for analgesia whereas agonist and antagonist have ceiling effect for analgesia so pendazosin is a mixed agonist and agonist which acts as an agonist on kappa receptors and it, it is a weak antagonist at mu receptor but what is morphine morphine is a mu agonist so what will happen if you give pendazosin to a patient who is already on morphine so you can see this mu uh, will be uh, displaced by the pendazosin so what would be the action on mu it would be now it would be antagonistic action and the pain relief would be only due to the action of uh, pendazosin on kappa receptors and the opioids which are acting on mu are the potent opioids so fentanyl morphine methadone these all are mu agonist okay so if you administer pendazosin to a patient who is already on uh, large amount of morphine then probably the patient will not have pain relief instead there will be more pain okay so in this patient you have to take a detailed history whether he has uh, missed a dose uh, then uh, you have to uh, administer the morphine itself as a soft dose okay so now i am moving on to the adverse effect what are the adverse effects adverse effect can be divided into two side effects and toxic effects so what are side effects these are adverse effects with the therapeutic doses i am going little faster uh, constipation nausea vomiting sleepiness and tiredness these are the common side effects itching dry mouth and urinary hesitancy these are the rare side effects and uh, regarding constipation it occurs almost in 95 percentage of patients and uh, the peculiarity is that it will be there the constipation will be there as long as the patient is on opioid so you have to continue the laxatives uh, as long as the patient is on opioid 
uh, and the preferred uh, laxative is stimulant laxatives. Examples are bisacodyl, senna, and sodium bicosulfate. So whenever you prescribe opiates, please remember to prescribe uh, stimulant laxative, bisacodyl. Nausea and vomiting, it occurs in almost one third of the patients when you start a uh, patient first time on opioid. But uh, it is self-limiting. Maybe up to five to seven days, the patient can have nausea and vomiting. After that, body will get adjusted to that. So for the first three to five days, you have to give an antiemetic. And which antiemetic would you uh, select? Um, as the mechanism of nausea and vomiting is mainly due to action of opioids on chemoreceptor trigger zone. Uh, and the most abundant receptors on CTZ is dopaminergic type 2 receptors. So you have to block dopaminergic type 2 receptors. So these are the drugs which have good action with uh, dopaminergic uh, D2 receptors, haloperidol, metoclopramide, and domperidol. Sleepiness and tiredness, this is also self-limiting. Okay. Uh, maybe within five to seven days, the patient will be uh, uh, wean of this effect. And what are toxic effects? When you give more than the required dose of opioid, the patient will develop some adverse effects, which are known as toxic effects. So these are delirium, myoclonus, and drowsiness. So myoclonic drugs, it might affect uh, a part of uh, body or even a part of muscle uh, or even whole body. So if the patient has toxic effect, that means the patient is taking more than the required dose. So you have to reduce the dose. Okay. So this was what uh, we have been talking about. Uh, opioids, uh, we are really concerned about uh, respiratory depression, isn't it? So um, this is a um, systematic review from 2003, uh, which uh, says most of the patients takes their uh, medication by mouth. That is oral, oral mouth, isn't it? So it is usually gradually increased. So this ensures that respiratory depression is unusual. And if respiratory depression occurs, you have to seek an alternative explanation. Uh, does the patient have pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, cardiomyopathy, or are we administering a benzodiazepine along with opioids? So please understand that respiratory depression is very unusual, with, especially with oral morphine. And if you titrate injectable morphine, like what I told you, then respiratory depression is, uh, would be very unusual. As I told you, I haven't seen. And even uh, Rajobal sir, uh, who has been in this field uh, for many years, he has also has not seen. So this is another um, thing which uh, you might be fearing, opioids causing addiction. Uh, so what you have to understand is there is a difference between, uh, there are two types of uh, dependence. One is physical dependence and the other one is psychological dependence. There are psychological dependencies addiction okay whereas physical dependence it is manifested by withdrawal reaction so this is the definition of addiction uh, by american academy of pain medicine uh, it's they describe it as a uh, disease you can see it's a primary chronic neurobiologic disease with genetic predisposition okay so if you have a gene uh, for addiction there is a chance that you may become addicted uh, but psychosocial factors and environment also play a favorable, uh, they play a pivotal role in the manifestation of addiction. That means if uh, you are working in an operation theater where all the types of opioids are available and one of your friend is already abusing the opioid. So uh, the uh, environment is favorable and you have a gene for addiction. So there is a chance that you may get, also get addicted. So how uh, it would be manifested, uh, the patient uh, or the person have impaired control over drug use. Uh, the dose which you have prescribed, the patient himself will increase every two or three days to get the same effect. That is not pain relief. It would be some other effect. So the patient will uh, know that this is not for pain relief. It is for some other purpose. So there will be compulsive use also, despite uh, half. And there will be craving also. Uh, so uh, this is uh, something which I would uh, like you to go through. Uh, because uh, I told you, uh, pharmacoeconomics is one of the important uh, factors. 
uh, which uh, causes a poor symptom control. Uh, so many of the patients, if you prescribe buprenorphine pack, uh, tramadol, etc., they may not have money to buy it. And uh, they will <coughs> repeatedly come to you and tell you that I don't have pain relief. So without knowing the patient is taking this, we may uh, write more and more medications. <coughs> so please see that uh, the pain relief with the morphine 5 milligram 4 hourly, he is taking a total 30 milligram, which will cost only 3 rupees 50 paise. But to attain the same pain relief, you have to give 300 milligram of tramadol, which might cost 24 rupees to 50, ru 50 rupees per day. Whereas with fentanyl patch, it will be about 100 rupees per day. With buprenorphine patch also, it would be uh, almost like that. With, but with methadone, uh, it is uh, comparable to morphine. Methadone is a cheaper drug. Uh, so whenever you talk in terms of fentanyl patch or buprenorphine patch, uh, please see whether the patient can afford it. Uh, so uh, I think I will stop here and uh, we'll take a few questions. Sir, is methadone uh, easily well, available? Excuse no? me. Yeah, methadone so, is uh, Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. We have, sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, like, we need to do the case presentation also. And we have only 10 minutes left. So is it okay, sir, to have the case presentation and then go ahead with the question answer session? Uh, so who is presenting the patient story today? Sir, Dr. Shweta. Dr. Shweta. Dr. Shweta, uh, what would you like to do? Uh, go with uh, discussion or with uh, the patient story? Whichever you decide, I am fine with it. And because Sir, I am fine I'm, with anything. <laughs> I see that there are a lot of questions. Sir, it is very, actually very interactive session and uh, very much I have learned from this. Yes, session. sir. Same here. I Fine. have so many doubts, you cleared everything. Yes, almost. so if, if everybody is happy much, for it, so many continue with your cleared. question answer session itself. And if Dr. Shweta herself is happy with it, I did not want to disappoint her because she shouldn't feel bad that she has done the presentation and then she's not been at least even asked if she would be willing to go ahead. That was the only reason Dr. Sunil, uh, I, I, I interrupted and asked. I, I, I do totally I, understand it's an interactive discussion, but we shouldn't disappoint her uh, also. That was yeah, the yeah, only yeah, concern. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, because... Uh, that's, that's a, yeah, so, yeah. Sir, I had, yeah. I had so many doubts, uh, even with my case, but I am cleared now. Okay. So many <laughs> doubts. <laughs> Fine, Thank go, you ahead so with the, go ahead with the uh, discussion then. Sir, is methadone uh, easily available, sir? Uh, methadone is available in India uh, since uh, 2018 and uh, if you uh, are a RMI, that is if your institution holds recognized medical institution status, mm -hmm. then with that you can uh, get uh, methadone. It is available. Okay, sir. sir. One more doubt, sir. Like if uh, morphine we need to, like oral has to, if patient is not able to eat, uh, like we have option for two routes, rectal or through rice tube, which one should we choose first? Uh, it all depends on um, patient's preference. Uh, no, bioavailability, sir. Uh, bio, uh, uh, if you, uh, the bioavailability of morphine per se is very less if you give it orally. Only 10% of morphine is bioavailable. That means the percentage of administered dose, which is directly available in systemic circulation is the bioavailability. Only 10% of morphine is bioavailable when you administer morphine orally. But rest, uh, it will go through liver and uh, uh, will be converted into metabolites and then liberated into systemic circulation for action. So if you administer uh, per, uh, per orally or through RILES tube, it will have the same effect. But um, I told you that the rectal route is uh, some literature says it is more superior better, to better. Um, oral route because it's uh, it's more bioavailable. That's what they say. But there may not be much difference. Uh, and uh, for practical purpose, uh, oral route is comparable to rectal route. But dose will be the same, no, sir? Dose will be the same. Dose will be the same. So it is it come under the Narcotic Act methadone? Yes, yes. Uh, it is. Okay, so we need license of, for. Uh, 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 does your institution hold uh, RMI status? 
no 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 sir that's why i am asking we are uh, doing efforts okay uh, so where are you from ashada is i am associate professor in lalram medical college meerut uttar pradesh uttar pradesh okay uh, so if you have an uh, rmi recognized medical institution status then you would be able to purchase methadone uh, so uh, i think uh, if you have any problem in accessing uh, opioids our state facilitation team would be really happy to help you okay sir. so you can get uh, in contact with uh, sripriya uh, so that uh, okay. she can help you okay sir. thank you sir sripriya please uh, sure uh, sir yeah. sure sir i will uh, facilitate her getting in connection with the sft teams yes yeah. how many days uh, dosages are given for a patient if he is taking uh, oral morphine at home uh okay uh, so there is no um, such uh, laws regarding how many days should be give but i think uh, it would be better uh, better to give uh, maybe two weeks if the patient can uh, come and visit us but uh, after giving morphine uh, for the first time you should um, call the patient after 2 days to find out uh, how he is doing um to see uh, is there any side effect uh, how is nausea and vomiting are you sleepy etc etc and is he taking sos dose and do we need to actually increase the dose of morphine etc so it would be good to give for 2 weeks but if a patient is from a very long distance we give for 1 month also because i was uh, you know i just wanted to know when the patient is treated for opioid addiction mm. uh, there is opioid substitution therapy centers yes, are yes. there the patient is asked to come you know even mm. methadone uh, substitution therapy so yeah. the patient is asked to come every day or whatever they were not given uh, drugs yes, yes so here you are giving you know bulk of drugs to the patient so how do you ensure that he doesn't uh, you know take it at one go yeah. he doesn't yeah, yeah. he's not misusing it so uh, it's also our responsibility to make sure, sure that it is used properly so uh, in each visit uh, we will ask them to bring uh, the rest of the morphine and also to bring the used uh, cover uh, the uh, uh, tablet cover uh, so that we will understand uh, how much is uh, used and uh, and we you also have to calculate in your mind how much is this patient is going to use so you have to tally like that and we do a lot of home care so we physically verify uh, the amount of morphine no it will normally it will be given as uh, he mentioned for one or two weeks and then contact telephone calls are made and made sure how they are taking and what is their response and then the first time you're not going to give for two month supply or something like that you will when you're starting give for one or two two weeks at least so that they know it depends on the distance from where they are coming so many things you have to see and then talk to them over phone and make sure as he said in two days time and also um, after 10 or 15 days they will definitely come back and you see and you you're physically seeing the patient and reassessing how bad or sick or crying patient to how they are when they've had and then the response you see and uh, you match with all the clinical uh, differences that you see and then that time you would give for some more time and then you have to mention that how careful it has to be kept and then review whenever they come they normally bring if it's in a box or something they normally bring it back and they will they will bring the box even without the remaining uh, 20 25 tablets left something like that so normally the amount of pain relief and then they the wouldn't have slept so the benefit over or oh, outweighs the risk there so they will know the benefit and then they will know and we also have to always keep it. your your suspicion of query is right but there are ways and means and then if they are misusing also you will know instead of coming after four weeks they'll come back in two weeks time that is an indication that they are misusing or somebody else is misusing so we have to be very smart in finding out all these things Thank you. Relatives can also be involved in that, no, for supervision. Yes, yes, that's why yeah. I said whether yeah. the patient or somebody. So that's yeah. why you will know if they are constantly contacting you, or if they are contacting you 
ahead of time you have given for four weeks they are contacting so there are so many ways for us to be awake alert and find out so we have to keep keep this in mind when you have those queries also and the clinical response physical changes everything you match together and see what what exactly is happening so we always have to be alert and find out is there a benefit or is there a risk in it so find out what it is and then appropriately do because see morphine is gold standard important things what i would like all of you to take home is such a elaborate interactive discussion we have had so first the dose then giving them uh, teaching them what it is and then giving appropriate antiemetic medication before along for the first five days and giving laxative that is what see because the benefit many times is lost but just because oh, they were sick you have to teach them tell them when to take the antiemetic when to take the tablet tablets by the clock all that is important and then giving the laxative antiemetic and laxative should go together because many times with the side effect they lose the benefit we don't want that we want them to get the benefit so teaching them telling them and then observing them all together so everything what you have heard today as a package you have to take it so just morphine is not what so the whole thing the dose benefit risk and uh, side effect what is especially cost effectiveness you are getting something for such a cheap price so have everything very clearly this is gold standard and what morphine relief you what pain relief you get with morphine we have to see what the patient needs why are they coming I main 80% of them come for pain relief so that is important so that is very important thing to take home today uh, what how to do it i am i'm i know the session is going to end but still uh, one doubt i just want to ask go ahead, and go ahead. Then, if we are giving morphing or it's it like it can be in a like institution there should be always uh, home care or something should be along with that because if it is not there then maybe if it is uh, used uh, the morphine is abuse will not know so there should be always a provision or there should be always attachment of home care with uh, morphine like in smaller places they might not have home care then what is the other options they might have to do no the if, ntps act does not uh, talk about uh, home care uh, it is not a criteria for uh, okay. getting the rmi status uh, okay, sir. according to uh, uh, now the ntps uh, act Uh, is uniform across india uh, so uh, a few things uh, which uh, which are important to get an rmi status is you should have um, that there, there should be a doctor who are experienced in pain management then uh, there should be enough space for the patient to come and sit down and uh, there should be uh, safe locking capacity for opioids so these are the three four criteria uh, which you need to be um, satisfied uh, to get a uh, rma uh, status so there are many institution which works only uh, uh, as uh, outpatient units uh, okay, so um, you have to ask the patient to bring all the medication with its cover and as madam told uh, with the, the medicine box itself uh, when they come for review you um, count it uh, physically count it and then verify uh, and they have a calculation in your mind also and then you can give uh, the number of tablets the another questions i know the fear so and myth the has to go often uh, those are more scared that has to go that is what it is also a tablet it, to give you are giving 5 mg dose oral he has mm -hmm. stressed so many times oral mm -hmm. dose does not have all the unimagined or the imagined uh, side effects what side everyone effect. thinks of okay, okay. ma'am one second uh, mm -hmm. why the dose of morphine is double during sleep hours you have to give ah the so yeah. himself if you want to say let him yeah. say then uh, i will say so um uh, actually i told you uh, the duration of action is uh, of morphine is only 4 hours but at night time uh, you, uh, we are giving uh, morphine for patient with a severe pain so what's well, the most yeah. important goal that we have to achieve for a patient uh, who has severe pain it's sleep isn't it yes uh, if the patient has severe pain they will not be able to sleep at night so when you give double dose there are a few advantages one is that uh, it will induce some sleep in addition to pain relief and um, when you <clears throat> whatever be the dose of morphine the duration of action is only 4 hours 
but when you mm -hmm. administer a uh, large dose what will happen or double dose uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, peak of the, the peak uh, plasma uh, will get increased yeah and it will come only slowly so that the duration of action instead of four hours uh, uh, we suppose it will be increased and this is uh, very useful and we have seen it uh, very useful uh, for all patients yes okay. i would also Thank like you, to add on see all of it if you are giving four hours two o'clock you have to wake up the patient and give you're um, disturbing the sleep there and practically as you have mentioned i have seen and given to patients for so many patients and that is the best way and it has to be stressed if you give that you're not breaking their sleep they will have a peaceful sleep and then wake up it will not be harmful so the double dose is more beneficial it doesn't disrupt their sleep allows them to get sleep which is very important for them to have a normal day the day after doctor and nurse will also Beneficial. sleep yeah that's right also <laughs> thank you sir and thank you ma'am what, what was it now doctor and nurse can also sleep sleep peacefully <laughs> yes, yes 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 that's good good, good. see it's, it's all we are all one family one team we have to look after each other if you look after your nurse you will be beneficial so it's all of you function as one family see the benefit i've seen that all my life and you and them will you have to look after them as your family and they will look after you Correct. So, happy family. I also want to mention you that uh, we also did a study on uh, whether uh, the uh, morphine is misused. So, uh, mm. when Dr. Walser was at Calicut, we did a study and it was published in Journal of Pain and Symptom Management. And we couldn't see any problem uh, of misuse. Uh, so, uh, be uh, confident that, uh, uh, but you have to also do your duty. That's all. Exactly. See, as he has mentioned, I've also seen for the last three years when I've worked in every day, 50 patients, I have seen an off which at least 30, 30 to 40 patients have given morphine. So in that three year period, 4,000 to 6,000 patients in that. So you don't, you have to be watchful. That doesn't give you an uh, added advantage or like a free bird. If you're careful and you're using it for pain relief, your diagnosis and indication is right. So don't worry. Anything else in the chat box? Yeah, there was a question. Can we give morphine mm. SR tab instead of patch? Yes, uh, we can give um, morphine SR, but uh, compared to immediate release morphine, it is three to four times costlier. So, if you are providing, uh, we are an institution where we provide all medications. Uh, our uh, all care is free of cost. There is no billing system, uh, and uh, uh, so you have to also look at, uh, as I told you, pharmacoeconomics. So, if you give uh, SR morphine, you need to have more funds uh, to procure it. So that's also a problem. But if a patient is um, okay, affordable, then you can and uh, i would li also like to ask you how many uh, representatives came to you uh, for uh, writing morphine nobody will not have come but there would be many representatives who have approached you for with the uh, fentanyl patch and uh, buprenorphine patch true sir that's always there sir So practicality is what you have to keep in mind with all these things. Is Dr. Sunil not, Dr. Sunil Kumar not audible or something? Yeah, I uh, no, no, I thought you were trying to speak and then uh, now, now I could hear you. Okay, is there anything else? Uh, there's something? Ah, okay. So, so the uh, thank you message is flowing. Okay, in the then we will thank Dr. Sunil Kumar for an excellent presentation and such an interactive. I think everyone's queries has been solved as much as possible.
and very practical ones because as we see patients is what we need to know how to solve and sort the issue on which is in front of our, our hands. So in that way, yeah, we had such a lovely interactive uh, discussion. We had our query solved as we learned. So thank, thank you, you very sir. much. Thank you, ma'am. I hope thank you. one thank and all also feel the same. Thank you, Dr. Sunil Kumar, for such a, an excellent uh, informative interactive session. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil sir. Uh, personally, I have been torturing him for the last uh, three, three and a half hours because he has joined another session with uh, me alone. And uh, now this is his continuous fourth hour. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for, and he, uh, trust me, he had has a very exhaustive day with a few visitors, international visitors also coming in. So in spite of that, you agreed to give us this wonderful session and kept your promise and delivered the exceptional session as expected always. Thank you, Sunil sir, for that. And thank you each of you participants for making this very interactive. I hope Sunil sir and Radha ma'am would have enjoyed the session as equally as every one of you. Um, yes, yes, that's my pleasure. Yes, definitely. So uh, with uh, that very positive note and high energetic note, this is Sri Priya along with Dr. Sunil Kumar and Dr. Radha Venkateshan signing off from the Tips Echo Hub. See you in the next session with another interesting topic and yet another eminent faculty. Till then, everyone, take care. Be happy. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am.